What if I told you there is a feature in your Microsoft devices that in addition to blocking unwanted ads can also boost your network security in the process? In today's video, we are diving deep into the Myrotix Ad List feature. I'm Wilmer Almazan, and this is the Network Trip. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about a new feature that is available in Router OS, and I'm talking about Ad List. So the initial idea is to block unwanted ads at the network level. But additionally, to just blocking ads, we can take advantage of that functionality to also block malicious domains. And if we combine this Adly feature and also DNS over HTTPS, we can have a more solid security approach. To have Adlis and DNS over HTTPS working together, we are going to need at least the version 7.16 of Router OS. So make sure to have that version to take full advantage of Adlis working together with DNS over HTTPS. So if you want to configure DNS over HTTPS, I recommend you to check the video above. When we talk about blocking ads or malicious domain at a network level, basically we are meaning that the router is going to be working as a DNS server. So this approach is going to be recommended for software environments like a home setup, a small office setup, where we can be relying on our Myrotic device to be acting as a DNS server. If you have a larger network, so in that case, probably an external solution is going to be recommended, like having a DNS security service from external third parties or have DNS server running something like Pi-hole or Adgar Home, for example, where basically you can be relying in this functionality plus some additional security features. So the main idea with Adlis is that the router is going to be working at the DNS server. And for example, if we have a device that is trying to go to a malicious domain.com, so the router is going to take that DNS query and instead of resolving to the actual IP that belongs to the domain, the router is going to reply with what we call a sinkhole IP that commonly is going to be the IP 0.0.0.0. So that means that this PC won't be able to contact this specific domain. So that is going to happen with domains related to ads, but also that can happen to domains that can be hosting malware or any malicious activities. In general, this is going to improve the network performance because we're going to be blocking that content at the router level. So that means that that content is never going to hit those endpoints that are inside our network. So that is different if we have an extension in our browser where basically the plugin is blocking that content from being displayed in the web page. What about the implementation? What is actually going to be happening inside our Myrotic device when we have this feature enabled? So first of all, we're going to need a list. So we're going to have a list of domains. And basically, that is going to be some sort of text file. And that text file is going to contain domains. And it's going to contain the sinkhole IP. That is going to be the IP 0. So the content of that list is going to be loaded into the router's memory. When the router intercepts those DNS queries, it's going to use that list to resolve the domain, so basically it's going to send a single IP to those devices that are requesting that information. That list can be hosted externally, where basically external organizations or entities will be managing that information. And we can be finding lists related to different domain categories, like for example, simply ads, or we can be looking for phishing domains, or domains related to scam, and so on and so forth. Another option is to manually create that list, and then we can simply have the list in the file system of the Myrotic device. Or another option is if we have a file server in our network, we can upload that list there, and then the router can be retrieving that information. When we have configured one or more domain lists in the router, the router is going to be updating the information every one hour. If there are changes on the list, the router is going to retrieve that information every one hour. Also, there is an option where we can manually trigger that action and then we can refresh the list at any moment. 
Now it's time to see this in action. And for doing that, I have this router here that is connected to my internet service provider. And then in my virtual environment, I have a file server and also I have my user's devices. So there is a PC here that we can see here on the right, where basically we are going to be testing all the changes that we are going to be performing. So at this point, I have just a regular setup. I have my internet connection. I have NAT for all the traffic that is coming from my internal networks and going to internet. The step number one is to enable the DNS server in our router. And we can do that by pushing the DNS server configuration via DHCP to our internal users. And the second one is by using DNS proxy. So that means that the users can be configured with the DNS server that they want, but the router is going to intercept the DNS queries and it's going to resolve those locally. So I'm going to show you those two methods. You only need to perform one of those two options. So the first option is going to be going to the DHCP server. And we see that these users are connected on Ether3. We see that we have a DHCP server running on the Ether3. And then if I go to networks, so here we have basically all the information that is going to be sent to those users. So I'm going to look for the network where those users are connected. So we have the 192.168.1.0.24. Live 24. We will simply open this object. And then here you see that we have this option for DNS servers. So if I don't set any value here, so the router is basically going to send information that we have at the router level. But in our case, I want to be explicit and I want to say that we are going to use this device at the DNS server. So this is the IP that is on Ether3. So basically these devices can reach that IP and they can send the DNS queries there. So now I can click OK. So this is the method number one. The second one is to enable the router as a DNS proxy. This is another option. You only have to perform one of those two. But in my case, I can simply go here to IP, firewall, and then to the NAT functionality. And we are going to add a destination NAT entry. And basically, here we are going to say that any type of DNS traffic, basically the UDP 53, that is coming via the Ether3, is going to be redirected to the router itself. So we simply use redirect, and this is basically going to intercept that query and it's going to be resolved locally. It's going to be sent to the process that we have running in this device. And also we'll copy this entry, and also we'll do the same for TCP. So we can add a comment here, DNS proxy. Also, we need to be aware of the firewall settings. For example, in my case, I'm blocking everything in this device, and the only traffic that is going to be allowed is the access to the Winbox from the LAN network and also ping from the LAN network. So that means that I need to allow the connections to the DNS server. And to that, I have to add some additional rules here in the firewall. This is going to be for input. And then I will go to UDP and destination is 53 if the request is coming from Ether3. And here I'm going to add a comment, allow DNS queries, and I'm going to copy this entry, and this is going to be for TCP as well. And now really this is going to be on top of the block everything else from internet. So I'm going to show you the actual firewall, so you can pause the video and you can check the rules. So basically you see that the router is accepting all the established and related connections, it's allowing Winbox from the LAN network, it's allowing ping from the LAN network plus the DNS queries also from the LAN network, and then it's blocking everything else. We have to make sure that the DNS server is actually running in the device. And to that, we're going to go to IP, uh, DNS, and we're going to enable this option, Allow Remote Requests. Now we'll click OK. At this point, the router is already running as a DNS server, is allowing all the requests from the local area network, in my case, Ether3. That means that if I go to this device and I send a DNS query, this is going to resolve successfully. And we can make sure that the router is the one that is resolving that by going to the cache. So if I go to IP DNS and then cache, I'm expecting to see all those values that were retrieved by the server and then forward to the internal clients. And basically, you can see that all that information is here. So that means that at this point, we are ready to enable the add list functionality. So first of all, we are going to need a list. 
So the first option we're going to be using a public list that is coming from one of those trusted entities. And we can see here, for example, this list from Steven Black. So this is one that is uh, in the MyRotix documentation. So you'll see here this host list. And basically here you're going to find different uh, type of list that you can simply import into your device. For example, this list, Unified Hosts. This is for adware and malware. And then if I go to here, raw host, I can simply click on the link. And this is going to give me that URL. And basically I can simply copy this URL. And if I go back to the router here, we're going to find this option for add list. And basically I will click on that. I will add a new list. And here under URL, I'm going to copy and paste that entry. And we have this option SSL verify. So this is going to make sure that the certificate is valid and then it's going to allow downloading that list and making that list available in the router. So now we'll click apply. But if I go to the logs, we're going to see something interesting here. So this is basically telling HTTP client error, not trusted CA certificate found. And the problem with this is that by default, router OS don't have any certificate store. So if I go to system and certificates, we can see that this is empty by default. So to make this secure, we have to download the certificate from that specific list. And then we are going to upload that into the router and the router will be able to trust that source. And to do that, we can simply go back to the list. We're going to click on the secure icon. And then here we have this connection is secure. And then here we have the option to view the certificates. So if I click on this, you can see that we have the certificate viewer. And then if I go to details, this is going to show me all the certificates. So basically here we have all the certificate chain. So basically we are simply going to select the root and we can simply click here on export. And I will simply save that file. And we're going to, we'll go to files, upload, and we are going to select that certificate and we'll click open. So now that certificate will be sent to the router. And then we simply need to import that certificate under system certificates. So here we click import and then we are going to select the file, then import. And now we can see that this is trusted and we have the validity time here. So more than 8,000 days. And now at this point, this error must disappear. So if I go now to IP DNS and then add list. So we see that still the match count here is zero. Name count is zero. So we can trigger this action just by clicking reload. So we see that more than 17,000 entries were loaded into the router. But if I go to the logs, I'm going to get multiple errors. So now I no longer getting the SSL error, so I'm getting another error, and this is related to the cache size. And that's because by default, we only have 2048 kilobytes for storing information. So basically, we have to increase this cache size. So let's say that I'm going to multiply this by 10, and I will click apply, and I will go back to DNS add list, and I will reload the list again. And now the router is fine, so it's loading all the entry for that specific list. So for example, here in this Ubuntu device, I will simply send a request for that specific domain. So now I will press enter, and you can see that the router is replying with the IP zero. So that means that these users won't be able to get into those domains. If we don't want to use an external list or we want to complement that external list with a custom list, also we can basically create a list and we can upload that list to the router. And the format is simply going to be an IP that is a sinkhole IP and a domain. And then we are simply going to go to the router and we are going to use that specific file. We can create that list in our PC and upload it to the router, or we can create that list directly in the router. So let's see how to do that. So to be able to create that custom list in the router, we can simply go to File, Add, and we are going to give it a name. So it's going to be my list.txt. So now we have created an empty file. But then we can simply go to File, and we are going to use this option for Edit. And then we have to provide the name of the file. 
and in this case it's going to be my list and then we are going to use this contents option so now you can see that we have the file and now you can simply create a list of domains like for example 0000, 000. this is going to be uh, domain one.com and we are going to have another end so basically here you get the idea you can add all the domains that you want to explicitly block and now we can simply press ctrl o and this is going to save that file and now we can simply go to ip dns to add list and we are going to add a new list in this case we won't use url we are going to pick file if i go to my list I will disable SSL verify because in this case we don't need that and I can simply click OK and now in a few seconds the router is going to load that entry. You can see that it has found three different domain entries. So you can see that if the user is trying to go to domain1.com the response is going to be 0.0.0.0. .0, .0, .0. If you have multiple routers and multiple exits to internet then probably instead of having a file in every device you can have a file server and then every router can be talking to that central file so in that case we can use a file server let's enable this ubuntu device as a file server to host that central leader can be reached from multiple routers first of all we are going to update the repository so now we can simply install the apache 2 Then we are going to create the list inside the web server's default directory. And then inside the file, we are going to follow the same format. So once we have all the entries that we require, we can simply save the file. And now this file is going to be accessible from the router. To verify that the list is accessible, we can simply go to the browser in that server. And we can type localhost mylist.txt. And this is basically going to show you the file. So it means that the file is reachable, is being provided by the web server. Now we can go back to the router and basically we have to add the URL that is pointing to this file server. So now we can simply go to IP, uh, DNS, add list, and we are going to add a new list. And here under URL, we are simply going to type HTTP and then the IP of that web server that according to our diagram is 10.1.0.100 and then a slash and the name of the list so at this point we are not using https so i will disable ssl verify now i can simply click ok if we go back to that entry we can see here the name count has the value of two so that means that the router has already contacted the server got the list and had loaded those domains here so if i need to make any changes i can simply go to the server basically here i can simply add new information now i can update this entry and the router is going to update that information so every hour is going to be contacting the web server so now we have a still two here but if i want to trigger that action now i can simply click on reload and you can see that the router got the new entry and now we go to the user devices and we send a request to that domain this is going to be replying with the sinkhole ip we have explored multiple options for enabling ad lists in our MyRotic devices. Additionally, to simply blocking ads, remember that we can also block domains that are related to malicious activities. I hope that this video has been informative for you, and I see you in the next one.